Huh. I wonder what my FBI files say these days. Oh, Sydney's my most played character now. That's neat. For a long time it was Clover. Well, I mean, I wonder what my most used weapon is. Oh. Ooh, the Queen's Wrath. Huh. I mean, I ran this thing a lot between like Infamy 0 and 3, but it didn't really put that heavy of a dent in my account. Oh. Oh, it put a, it put that in my account. 11,000 kills with the Queen's Wrath on 375 heists. That's 30 kills per mission. Ooh, do I need to actually drag this thing out again and see what it... <laughs> sure, let's, let's just let's take it for a spin. I think why I use this thing so much is probably just because it was part of the Clover Pack, but if I was killing 10,000 guys with the thing, there was clearly something it was doing right. Let's mod this one up a little. Ooh, ooh, that's a reticle I have not used in forever. Man, weird how something you use all the time can just vanish like this, you know? So, compared to my typical car 4, a typical Queen's Wrath is a faster fire rate, less concealment, less threat, and a slower reload. A much, much slower reload. Now, to be fair, the thing can take a speed pull, and that's great. This is a perfect weapon for a speed pull magazine. It makes a slow reload much faster. Let's take the Union out of the question for just a second. Let's just t let's take the Wrath to town and compare it to the car 4. We're just going to compare it to the car 4. I mean, it's not great. But the car 4 is a bit better, and if we're honest with ourselves, it's kind of fallen off the curve, the car 4. That thing's not king of the hill anymore, it's like, barren? Unmodded the Wrath has better accuracy, but there's plenty of mods for the car to fix that, and the recoil on the Wrath just doesn't feel all that great. And this is a call out to Mayor Mustard McManus, a man who strolled in with a fantastic name and then nearly gave me a heart attack for bringing a saw. I don't know what he brought instead, I saw a saw, I almost died. Well, half a heist and game crash later, I had drawn most of the conclusions I felt I was going to draw about the Queen's Wrath. It's a mediocre weapon, with many better alternatives these days, most notably the AK-5, Clarion, and Union 556. So two questions remain in my mind. What set it apart from the car for then enough for me to run the thing, and what makes it so important now? Well, unfortunately I have answers for both questions. The reason I ran the Queen's Wrath then was because it wasn't a weapon the meta at the time considered. It was on par with the car 4, but it wasn't the car 4. And because it was paired at the time with the only character DLC, I was proud to own it, proud to run it. As for what makes it so important now, it's, uh, nothing. None of the modification potential of the car, worse stats all around compared to its rivals, and just what was up with that reload speed. Now, a slightly off-meta weapon can work, and it can work quite well. The Cobus 90 I was running in all of these grinder builds is not a weapon I often consider. It's probably one of my least used secondaries, but it's high magazine size paired with a rather swift reload with a speed pull and an actual pickup rate really set the thing apart from the Mark 10s and Compact 5s surrounding it. Again, it's not a main pick, but it's a pick nonetheless. It's a viable weapon. The Queen's Wrath could have been like this. Bullpups are known for their low profile so give the weapon more concealment boosters, especially because this is Clover's weapon and she's the only person with an outright dedicated stealth perk deck. And if the weapon doesn't have a higher rate of fire than the car 4 and the like, it probably could use a bit of a better pickup rate. And lastly, let's just cut that reload speed down and... Okay, at this point what I've created is effectively just the UAR, but... That then would give the Queen's Wrath a better niche than what it currently sits in. There's just so many weapons in Payday 2 that are like this. They're effectively downgrades to other weapons, but with no justification as to why they've downgraded what they did. They're unlocked later, they cost more money, and they don't perform as well as their counterparts. And that's a shame in all honesty. I mean, I get it. Payday 2 is a game with 100 plus weapons, so there's going to be some that slip through the cracks. But it'd be nice to see where and when that happens. Overkill already pulls player stats for the FBI files, so maybe we could get like a global roster that shows how often each weapon's run in player loadouts, and that way we can say, oh, the R93 is running 6% of all heists, but the Falcon Rifle? That's only at point two. We should figure out what people like and dislike about the Falcon Rifle and help it become more popular. What about the Liebensauger? Is the low use percentage just because it's unpopular but otherwise a fine weapon, or is it fundamentally inferior? What about the Valkyria, the Gecko 762, the CMP? What can we do to help these weapons? I think better reporting as to who runs what helps games become more balanced, and then we might find ourselves no longer forgetting that Gecko 72 exists, or asking does the Queen's Wrath even have a point? And if I have anyone wish for Payday 3, it's that reporting like this exists to help keep weapons fresh and balanced and updated.
If you like this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Patreon and social media links are in the description.